Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. In this video I will explain um, how to make a map script um, because everything, I mean the behavior of um, your entities on the map will be scripted in Lua of course. There are things that you can configure here in the various editors. Um, for example, if you make a treasure chest, you have a lot of options here. But um, as soon as you want to make something really dynamic, like a puzzle, I don't know, um, um, opening a door automatically when all enemies of a room are killed, or something like that, or a complex dialogue with a character, you will need, and um, this will be done in uh, with Lua scripting, with with Lua code. So uh, let's take this uh, an, an any example of map actually. And when you create a map, there are actually two files: the map itself and the map script. So every map has its own script. For example, this one, this one. Well, well when you uh, right-click the map, you can either open the map, which is here, or open the map script. So, the map script is a Lua file that has the same name as the map. So, you can see that in uh, your files. If I open, if I find my quest, yes. Uh, maps. So there are two files for each map. This one is this cave map, uh, cave.dat and cave.lua. So the dat file defines the position and properties of each entity of the map, all of these. And the dot .lua file defines the uh, scripted behavior of your map and its entities. So we will see how to to do this. So let's, let's only keep this map. So when you create a map the editor automatically creates this template of script but um, it actually does nothing. <laughs> the initial one does nothing. So I'm on the map, nothing special happens. I will actually just uh, remove all this. So of course you will have to read the documentation. Yeah, let's see the documentation actually about map scripts. Yeah, so so our documentation, Lua API reference. You have all types here, and we are interested today in maps. So. I really recommend to read the overview part of this page to understand how this works. So they explain here that you have two files, like I just said, and then you have an example of script. So this is what similar to what we will do in this episode. Okay, so remove all this. Um, if your script is empty, it works perfectly, there's no problem. But um so when you when the player and the hero enters a map, the corresponding the corresponding map script is executed automatically. So you don't have to uh, call require cave.lua from other scripts. Um it is already opened and executed by the engine. So this is a difference between um, tr normal scripts, like this one, this one, like what we saw in the video about using require to separate your scripts in different files. In this case, um, the engine already automatically op opens your script. 
your map script. It's also the case, uh, just for more information of items, we saw a little bit of that um, in the chapter about treasures, and we see later that it works the same way um, for enemies and custom entities. Okay. But we have no enemies and no custom entities just yet in this tutorial. Okay, so as I was saying, your Lua script file will be executed and a parameter will be passed to your script. So how does this work? Um, actually, any Lua file is itself a function, can be seen as, as a perfectly regular function. Uh, so it can get parameters and it can even return values. Um, and by the way, that's what we do, return. We return something in most scripts when require is used. But uh, okay. And why, why am I saying this? Because the Solaris engine will call your script with the map parameter, an object of type map. So the first thing you want to do is probably to retrieve the parameter. And how do you do that? It's with this special syntax, three dots. So um, the, the file is a perfectly regular function, uh, a normal a regular Lua function, except that you don't write the function keyword as usual. So you can't directly name your parameters but instead there is this notation, this special notation to uh, get the parameters. And there is only one parameter in this case, the map. So this is an object of type map. You can call it uh, as you wish. Yeah, I always call it map. And as you can see here, maps have a lot of functions really a lot and a lot of events as well so we can define the event map on started it is called when the player enters the map and for example we could very well print something here um, the map is starting Okay, and when you execute the game, you have whatever you printed appears here in, in the console. Okay, map on started. So we define the on started event, which is documented somewhere here. It also takes a destination parameter, so maybe it can be useful sometimes to know from where what destination the hero is starting. For example, sometimes you will open some doors or not, uh, depending on where the hero is starting. But uh, in a very simple map like this, yeah, there is only one destination anyway. So you could pu you could put the parameter here and use it, but if you don't need it, you don't even have to write it. It will be just ignored. Uh, so yeah, the map is starting, and then let's maybe call an example of function. You can get a lot of properties of the map here, and then you have stuff about entities, including the hero. And you can even create entities dynamically. But uh, for example, let's just print the size of the map when it starts. Size, map get size. Um, so uh, this is the regular print uh, Lua function. And if you don't know it, it can take as many parameters as you want. So we pass this string and then um, the result of map get size. And map get size actually gives two results as possible in Lua. 
the width and the height so okay size and it pr shows the size of the map so this is a small example of map script you can also of course for example play a sound secret when the map starts because why not and you will hear the sound okay um, if I leave the map and if I come back we heard the sound again and we saw this again so your file is executed again every time the, her the hero enters the map so even if you play the sound here um, when the script is executed which is almost the same as map unstarted well you will still hear the sound twice the first time and then when you come back we hear it again so this is a, an important difference with um, how it works when you use require um, if you didn't see the chapter about the tutorial about separating your code in different files using require um, you should check it to understand how, how this works but um, require only executes the, the script once and then if the same script is required again uh, th the result of the first execution is directly returned it's not executed several times but that's not the case of map scripts the script is executed again every time the hero enters the map and this actually can be useful for debugging so I don't close the game but I change the map script right now to remove the sound and if I come back um, the script was executed again so uh, already the the updated version of the script was executed so this is very handy to debug your game because you can change the map script uh, without restarting your quest we see that we saw the second print here but we didn't hear the sound a second time okay um, I think that's all I wanted to say about how map scripts work um, map scripts are probably the type of scripts you will spend the most time with because every map f I mean most maps will have a script to define um, whatever happens on the map except for very simple maps but as soon as you have um, some elaborate interaction with a, uh, with a character um, doors to open chests to make appear dynamically things like that uh, entities to um, to manage in, ge in general this will, this will most of the time be done from the map script um, okay so again I just introduced the fundamental stuff but you should read the overview part here it, exp it really explains very well with a nice example here and it gives more details that will be very useful to understand um, okay that's it for this episode Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye.